models and technologies. If you're 83 in Peter's book, kind of skipped over the web. I'll come back to the web stuff in a minute. But 83 in Peter's book, I guess, 935, system development. Uh, and I asked about my programmers. Okay, here. You want to program me? Yeah. With what? With what? Java, JPE, PHP. Java, oh, here we go. So we got, we, so we got an OO geek in the room. All right, cool. All right, see, there you go. See? Good. All right, then you can help help us out here a little bit. Um, you might get, uh, gee, gee, there's certain, you can tell which ones that Sean likes. The telecom and networking one is like this thing. It's 200 pages. All right, operations is how long? It's like 50, maybe, you know. Whereas Peter, you know, he's fairly consistent. There's a good chunk dedicated to each one, so it's, you have to remember where she came from, too. She was doing network stuff and a little bit of application stuff in the Air Force, so that's what she sticks with. So it's what you know. Um, if you take a look at this idea, so we mentioned the idea of a, you may have the term knowledge discovery in the database. Have you ever heard of KDD? What's a KDD? If you ever hear this thing, KDD, okay, is just another term for Data mining. That's it. That's all KDD is. Um, this is but somebody wanted to make it sound cooler and give it a weird acronym. So and maybe ADD was taken. So but KDD, all right, is essentially that's it. But we have different types of, of data mines. There's a, if you get Sean's book, there's a chart. If anybody needs access to a PDF, let me know. We'll get your stuff like this. Um, next week, actually, next week is if anybody wants to like start figuring out any of this stuff, I don't have to teach or do anything next week but unpack boxes and that's going to be a slow, easy process. So I don't plan on getting it done for the whole week. So it took me a day to pack up the place, so I'm going to take seven days to unpack. This is easy, okay? I got my beer chilling there and I got uh, pizza on speed done, so I'm good to go. Alright. Well, I want to move yeah, to Rockville, right off uh, Rocky Morse. So, um, so you'll hear this term when they talk about some of these, you'll hear this idea of a rules-based or a knowledge-based system. Uh, and maybe on the WebMD, when they were feeling a little cruddy and playing the symptom checker thing. Now, you haven't tried this? Oh, you gotta check this out. It like, has a nice picture of the nondescript and not, not anatomically accurate person. Um, kind of like the G.I. Joe action figure thing here, so not too embarrassing. Then you point to the area that you're, you click on the area where the, the hurt, the voodoo is, and it helps you narrow down systems. It's actually, you know, so far we're batting about 95% on self-diagnosis uh, with the family. So, you know, I don't know, maybe we'll put the doc out of it. But the, that system is essentially, it's really, it's a rules-based system on there. Because all it's doing is it's matching up, you're narrowing down categories again and again according to the rule. If they click here, then shoot, these are my symptoms that are available. If they pick this system, well, the rule is that this system often goes with this system, or this symptom, sorry, often goes with this symptom. And that's it, it's going through. It's not what we call a knowledge-based system, which is we try to teach it according to some expert. Um, we try to actually take somebody's head into here. Uh, that's, and you can do a Google search sometime for some fun, look for something called Alice. Uh, you might want to find Alice with the word Turing, T-U-R-I-N-G, you know who Alan Turing was? Um, mathematician, uh, computer scientist, slash prosecuted actually by the military for being homosexual. Um, more than you need to know. Uh, but very interesting and thing. He, he came up with this test that how you could tell whether we basically developed artificial intelligence. I, I think the test is flawed because, but here's the model. All right, so we have this room here. Let's say in the other room over there, we have a random number of computers and people. All connected to, on this side, the only way we can communicate with them is through some terminal. So we're not all gonna do text. On that side, we don't know whether we got a person or we got the computer. And we can just converse with them, whether it's on a particular topic or whether it's on you know, uh, you know, anything we want. And if we cannot tell whether it's a person or a computer, then the computer system, whatever, on that other side has been deemed to have passed the Turing test. Now, I think that's kind of a, a, a bad judge of artificial intelligence when we're using us as the standard. So, there's a joke in there somewhere, but I don't know. Um, but seriously, that's what the idea is. If it can essentially convince you that 
you're talking to a human, then it's a pretty smart machine. Um, Alice was an attempt at this, so it has nothing to do with CISSP right now. I just thought it would be interesting to know. If it's, it's along those, it's a knowledge-based system. She, she gets fed databases, and she will talk to you and type in, so how are you feeling today, Alice? And she'll tell you. Oh, I'm feeling very nice. You know, it was raining earlier today. What has she done? She's checked the weather databases. She knows it was raining. So her whole sense of the world is based on, so they turned her loose on Wikipedia at one point or something like that. There was something else they turned her loose on. She seemed to have developed a fondness for cats. So basically we spent all this money for research and we got a cat. <laughs> that's it, you know. So ah, that's what she does, all right? So uh, if you find, yeah, just a quick Google, you can probably find her somewhere in here. So let's talk software real quick then and let's get through here. There are different types of languages on page 83 for Peter's book is actually good about this idea of kind of, he gives you a brief history of, of Sean sends you, actually, if you read Sean's book, she even sent you, say, go to my website to get this article. Did everybody see that part in there? She doesn't do that anymore here, right, in that version, I guess. Oh, sneaky. You know what she does in this version now? She says, go to my website. You'll need to know more about this. Go to this <coughs> website and sign up and, oh, I turned that on, sorry. And sign up. Well, when you go there, and you sign up, it's behind a, a give me your name and address wall, basically. So give me your name, address, I mean, and it's all, uh, they're all required fields. Yes. And within that day, you'll get a call from Logical Security. What, how can we help you with your CISSP study? So um, if anybody wants that, I've already gone through that and told them to kiss my name. Um, so I will can pass you the PDFs and you don't have to deal with the, the wall. How's that, okay? There's nothing on there that says I can't distribute it, so I checked. Uh, anyway, if you need it, just send me a note and we'll put it that way. Uh, I'm hesitant to put it up on, um, there, I'm, I'm getting very careful about putting things up that have her name stuck on them up on the meetup site. Um, because the, there, there is, of course, yes, the, you know, there's the, we have to sign our ethics agreement here. The other issue is that um, she's now aware of our meetup site. So I don't want to be too vocal about offending the, the parties that are out there. Has that? So I actually did send her a note recently. So she kind response. So. She did a free class in San Antonio, Texas. And he, did I mention this one? No. And listen to the model. They meet every couple of weeks on a Sunday. Yeah, it's free. Does it sound familiar to you? Yeah, so I put a comment on LinkedIn about that because somebody was saying, hey, if you're in San Antonio, you should come up to New York. So I commented to the guys thing on New York. I said, well, I know it's still a good distance from, but if you happen to be in the D.C. area, we have this one. I come back the next week, comments to me. Because it's her threat, right? Interesting. So I sent her a note about it. I said, hey, what's up? She never really replied to that part. Why, why delete my, I'm not interfering with your traffic there. It's because she was pushing her online course. That's what it was. So if you want to take it, you can pay a couple grand and take it online. So, yeah. All right, 83. So we have what we call control flow languages. Do you remember the days of basic? Remember your if-thens and your go-tos, right? There you go. Okay, we called it what? Good old spaghetti code. Woohoo! Yeah, we made our, our things. When we started to get a little more modular, we figured out we could you know, kind of group the code together here. All right, so you might hear this term, structured language. They use subroutines or functions, right? And our next step up was we finally got to object-oriented, which we'll talk about in a little bit here. Now, depending on who you are, you're teasing them about, if you ask an assembly program, you know, what object-oriented languages are, and a guy in my class, he says, overhead. <laughs> yeah, it's just overhead. That's, since he's going to write an assembly anyway, it's just overhead. So in Sean's book, Peter doesn't go in as much about this, but you might want to be familiar with, and I have other resources for you on this idea of different types of software development. So I'm going to jump a little bit here, what they call the software development life cycle. And why this might become important to you, you really